Hello everyone, now I will discuss the hydraulic properties of geotextiles. This hydraulic properties are basically the properties which are related with the water along with the geotextiles. So, basically it is a it by this testing we get idea about the water flow behavior may be in plane or cross plane or long term water flow behavior the soil particles gradually clogs the pores of geotextile and that will reduce the permeability characteristics. So, all these characteristics are hydraulic characteristics of geotextiles these are evaluated by measuring apparent opening size of geotextiles what is the pore size or opening size cross plane permeability that is the water flow characteristics across the plane which is important for filtration application in plane permeability that is the water flow along the plane which is important for drainage application long term permeability and gradient ratio. The apparent opening size is measured by dry sieving method the STM method also called dry method where glass beads of uniform size that is certain glass bead of uniform size is used. So, here the glass beads are sieved through the geotextiles and basically it is a faster method it has got some drawbacks I will discuss because in by this method we cannot test very thick non oven fabrics because the glass beads will get entrapped in inside the structure. We can only test the thin geotextile with proper opening. So, as per the standard test method around 50 gram very smallest size beads are taken in we start with the smallest size size that is a 75 micron approximately and it is a sieve through the geotextile for 10 minutes it is uh, the frame is shaking then determine the percent of glass beads retained on the geotextile and that same process is followed using a little bit larger size till the percent of glass bed present uh, that is uh, passed through the geotextile is x percent or less certain known percent or less that will keep on repeating. Suppose at 75 micron all the glass beads are passing through the geotextile. So, that will not give us the actual idea. So, we have to use the next little bit larger size in this way we will keep on repeating. Then we will get a plot between the bead size in x axis and percent passing on y axis. So, if y percent of certain particle size is retained the we are we will measure the what is the percent retained that means, all the pores are larger than this all the pores are that percent is retained are smaller than that size. So, if y percent of certain particle size is retained on geotextile then O y of geotextile is the size of the particle in millimeter that is usually 90 percent we take the y we take is 90 percent 95 percent are used in the literature. So, O 90 we used to take as per STM apparent opening size is either O 95 or O 90 we can use. So, O 95 means 95 percent are retained and 5 percent of the particles are passing through the geotextiles. That means, 95 percent of the pores are smaller than that of specified size of the particles. That is the meaning of O 95, because 95 percent particles are retained. So, the amount of particles retained will measure as apparent 
opening sides. So, 95 percent of particles are retained means that means 95 percent of the pores are smaller than that specific size. So, this is the different components, these are the sieves of different sizes, here it is shaking is taking place here. From this plot we will get the apparent opening size. So, for different size particles for here in x axis particle size is given and percent finer here. So, O 95 O 90 is 150 micron. So, if we take 150 and here it is 230 this is 100 200 230 for 230 micron only 5 percent is passing. 5 percent particles are passing through here the percentage finer this is percent particle passing through this. So, here if it is 5 percent particles are passing through at this particle size say 230 particle size that means, it is a O 95 that means, 95 percent of particles are retained. Similarly, at 150 micron the 10 percent particles are passing through, 90 percent particles are retained. So, in this way we get idea about the apparent opening size. The limitation of this methods as I have discussed, thick non-oven fabric we cannot use. If we use oven geotextiles, sometime yarn may get distorted that affects the apparent opening size value. Glass bed sometime it is a lighter one, it tries to float over the geotextile and another problem is that if we use the synthetic fiber, it may create the static electricity and that will affect the test result, because the glass beds will get attracted by the fiber. So, in that case we use the anti-static spray to avoid this problem. To overcome this problems, there is another way to measure the apparent opening size that is the hydrodynamic test or we can call it as weight sieving test. The test is almost similar to the dry sieving, but here it is done under water. So, uniform size of sand particles are used in this test. In dry sieving we use the glass beds here sand particles are used. Geotextile with sand particles is repeatedly dipped in water and taken out that has been taken out and uh, dipped again. So, that there is a movement created percent of sand particle passing through the geotextile is determined after the test. So, this is uh, similar to the dry sieving test, but this process the overcomes many limitations of dry sieving process like or the static electricity generation process is eliminated. This is the diagram where geotextile and sand particles are kept here and this total frame is moved up and down. So, that the sand particles move through the geotextiles typically number of cycles of immersion is 100 after testing we calculate the amount of sand particle passes through the uh, geotextile. Now, coming to permeability test as I have mentioned there are two types of permeability test one is cross plane permeability and another is in plane permeability. In cross plane there are again two types one is constant head permeability test another is falling head permeability test. In constant head 50 millimeter water head difference is created between the upper and lower surface of geotextile. Water is allowed to flow through uh, opening of 25 millimeter diameter, volume flow is measured and gradient means water head per unit thickness that is the gradient water gradient and from there we can calculate the flow rate this is the flow rate q and then permeability coefficient we can calculate. 
also if we divide the permeability coefficient by thickness we will get the permittivity. So, we will get all this data this is the photograph of the test device here water is fed this is a water inlet water column is there geotextile sample and the water head is measured. So, we can get the certain water head here and we calculate the water flow rate. So, this is the water outlet from the outlet we can calculate the actual flow rate for certain pressure difference. Now, with the this numerical example we can calculate the permeability coefficient and permeativity the from this given data the data is 500 ml of water collected in 300 second under 50 millimeter head of water. So, we have constant head we know the flow rate and thickness of geotextile is known it is 0.65 millimeter diameter of opening of permittivity device is 25 millimeter. So, from there we can calculate the flow rate. So, the flow rate is 1.67 milliliter per second if we convert it to cubic meter per second it will be 1.67 multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 area is known cross sectional area pressure difference is known from there we can calculate the permittivity coefficient and then permeability. Permeability coefficient is k n and permittivity its value is 0 0.068 per second. The other method is falling head permeability. In earlier case what we have seen the water head difference is kept constant by feeding by supplying water constantly, but here the supply of water is once we do not supply uh, constantly which sometime which simulates the actual condition and geotextile is placed and with the falling head we can calculate the permeability and water is collected here in a cylinder. So, water level initially water level is at this point so, height is H 0 and final water level at the end of the test is delta H 1. The falling head permeability test involved flow of water through the relatively short soil sample connected to a stand pipe which provides the water head and also allows the measuring the volume of water passing through the sample. So, that is how it is measured the diameter of the sand pipe depends on the permeability of the test soil. So, this water uh, falling head permeability is typically measured for permeability characteristics of a soil. So, before starting the flow measurement the soil sample is saturated and the sand pipes are filled with their water because if it is not saturated or it if it is filled with uh, the void that will actually affect the flow rate. So, the test is then start by allowing the water to flow through the sample the time required for the water to fall from the top to uh, the lower point is recorded and from there we calculate the falling head permeability using this formula that is the permeability coefficient and permittivity we can calculate. Another characteristics is that this is the falling head permeability tester it is a in plane permeability test where the water is allowed to pass through the plane of the fabric that is geotextile the test is performed at different gradient is water head per or length of sample at different water gradient it is used. Here it is a water head divided by length because in cross plane it was water head divided by thickness, but here gradient is length why it is through length in cross plane this is the flow and this is the thickness of the fabric. So, 
water is passing through the material from this point to this point. This is the point through thickness. That is why gradient required is water head divided by thickness here, okay, gradient I say. But in case of cross plane, the situation is different. This is the specimen. Here it is a length, width and this is a thickness. Here water is allowed to flow from this point and it is coming out. This is the water inlet through the thickness it is coming and allowed. To so, it travels this length L that is why gradient required and the pressure difference from this point to this point it is delta H and traveled L. So, gradient is here and this test in this test three different gradients are taken 0 0.25, 0 0.5 and 1 normal pressure is applied on the sample because typically in geotextile application the geotextile when it is placed under the ground there will be some pressure applied on the normal direction. So, that is why in this test we apply certain normal pressure so, maximum size is 300 millimeter by 300 millimeter that is the sample size and geotextile should be sandwiched between too thick rubber sheet to prevent any leakage. Here in this test we apply certain normal pressure this normal pressure is known normal pressure is required. So, that the actual it simulates actual uh, condition where normal pressure is applied. In addition to that this geotextile is covered with rubber sheet impermeable rubber sheet from both the side. This is just to ensure that the water which is coming from one side it flows through the plane across along the plane it should not come out from side just to prevent the flowing out of water from inside the structure that is why the geotextile is sandwiched between two thick rubber sheet. This is the diagram here it is a inflow and this is the outflow and water gradient is created we know the length and these are the rubber the impermeable rubber sheet it is covered by the impermeable rubber sheet this is geotextile inside applied load. So, the, from there we can calculate the water head and this water head is kept constant for a particular test and we can change the water head by changing the inflow this height. So, here water is constantly flown and it allows to overflow so that we can maintain constant head and from the this flow rate we can calculate the permeability coefficient and permittivity. So, Q is the flow rate permeability coefficient we can calculate this is the K P and water head is known and from there we can calculate the this uh, transmissivity. So, this in plane permeability coefficient and transmissivity we can calculate using this formula. Now, let us try to see one simple numerical. So, this data from this data we can uh, given data we can calculate the transmissivity and in, uh, in plane permeability coefficient I is the gradient here it is a 300 1 liter of water is collected in 90 second thickness of geotextile is 2 millimeter width and length of the 
specimen 300 and head difference is 300. So, head difference divided by length it is a this is a gradient and q is calculated the q is the water flow rate and from there we can calculate the transmissivity and in plane permeability. This is the k p value and permittivity value this in plane that is transmissivity this is the transmissivity value 3.7 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 5. So, again we can calculate the flow rate at different pressure that is very important because at different application how the fabric will perform geotextile will perform that data we can get at different. So, if we change the let us go back to earlier here if we change the applied pressure at different applied pressure we can calculate the transmissivity this data will this graph will help in designing in plane flow parameter we can also calculate if the shape of the uh, specimen is circular in that case it is a radial in plane flow is measured using this formula where R 1 and R 2 are the radius of the outer radius and inner radius. So, from there we can calculate using this formula we can calculate the in radial flow parameter. Next test is the gradient ratio test where the, the pressure that flow parameter if how the flow para flow of uh, water is affected by introduction of geotextiles that is assessed here. So, gradient ratio is the flow it is a flow through soil under drain by a geotextile filter layer. So, when the geotextile is laid in the soil. So, in that condition here the actual flow is measured. So, this is the technique where the soil as well as geotextiles are placed together in earlier permeability and transmissibility testing they are tested in isolation. So, soil and geotextile are put together here the compatibility between soil and geotextiles are assessed here. So, if the flow rate is less or uh, gradient ratio it is a pressure is high then we can conclude that the geotextiles and the soil is not compatible. So, we must select a geotextile which is actually compatible with the particular soil. So, difference in heads of soils are of water are measured. So, mass of piped particles equal to mass per sample area that can also be measured here for good compatibility between the geotextile and soil a steady state gradient ratio value should be less than 3. If the gradient ratio is more more than 3 it is increased that means it shows that the particles are blocking the geotextile and proper flow of the system is reduced. Here in this system this is the soil flow rate soil with the depth of soil here it is a 50 millimeter and pressure head is calculated that is H 1 with H 1 and here it is a water and water is flowing from this side this is 50 millimeter here it is a 25 millimeter and water is a 25 millimeter. Now, actual head of soil is 50 millimeter here. So, that means H 2 minus H 1 the actual soil head here it is a 25 millimeter. So, this distance is 25 millimeter. So, H 2 minus H 1 because at this point there is no soil. So, but only geotextile. So, geotextile and 25 millimeter of soil that situation that means H 2 minus H 1 by 25. 
So, presence of geotextile and soil is there and to H 3 minus H 2 it is actually it is sorry it is a 50 mm. So, H 3 minus H 2 here this height the water height with the distance of 50 millimeter and if we take the ratio that is actually showing the gradient ratio. Now, here if the geotextile is blocking suppose here geotextile permeability is much less than this soil permeability in that case this H 2 minus H 1 by 25 will be higher than the denominator. So, this will basically be very very high that that shows the proper flow of water is not there. Once we apply the geotextile in soil uh, condition it is normally it is more than normal soil, but with the time it should get stabilized. So, this picture shows here initially it is typically around 1 and gradually it increases and this is for oven fabric and here it is a non oven fabric. So, gradient ratio of non oven fabric is little bit higher than oven fabric, but still we use non oven fabric prefer non oven fabric because it is better filtration characteristics this high gradient ratio it is due to clogging inside the structure, but after certain time it gets stabilize. So, it is around 2 gradient ratio which is acceptable, but on the other end oven although the gradient ratio is low, but it is not used for drainage or um, that permeability purpose that cross plane permeability is not there. So, drainage application or filtration application it is not normally used as per as long term flow rate. So, gradient ratio is used. So, flow rate can be determined by establishing steady state condition and permeability coefficient can be determined. So, with the long term at steady state condition the permeability is determined. So, this is the schematic diagram initially the system permeability reduces gradually because the soil filter formation. So, this is the system permeability system permeability means the geotextile along with the soil as I have already mentioned initially there will be little bit piping the soil smaller soil particles will come out from the, uh, the through the geotextile and soil filter formation will be there that is unstable condition. So, during that unstable condition the geotextile also being clogged by soil particle which is which penetrates inside, but after certain time when the proper soil structure is formed in the upstream side then the total system flow rate will be stabilized and that shows by this stability that is a horizontal line shows there is no change in permeability and that is how the long term flow condition is maintained and this is done using the gradient ratio test also that is the end of the section geotextile. In next class we will start with another topic on technical textile till then thank you. Thank you.